One of the things I really love about the Huntington is the diversity of collections. We have a botanical collection, which is plants. We have a book collection in the library, as well as a lot of other objects on paper. And we have an art collection. In the next few minutes, we'll take a sneak peek at the story of the Huntington and some of the people who work behind the scenes. On your field trip, you may not meet most of these people, but you'll see the collections they study and protect. Listen closely and look carefully. There are hundreds of thousands of books and plants and works of art at the Huntington, and everyone has a story to tell. Henry Huntington was a railroad man, and he married Arabella. Arabella was particularly passionate about collecting European art, and that's really the original heart and core of the art collections at the Huntington. They collected different things, Arabella and Henry. Arabella was much more interested in French artwork, and she collected French paintings, French ceramics, French decorative arts, but she also had a taste for Flemish and Italian pictures. Henry was mainly interested in books, but he also collected British works of art. British paintings is one of the great strengths, European decorative arts, European paintings, works on paper, and then the tremendous amount of materials that they were collecting for the library. Henry Huntington collected books because he enjoyed reading them. He wasn't collecting them because they were expensive. He wasn't collecting them because other people wanted them. He was collecting them because he liked them. Henry thought he could have all his books in his home. And so Arabella said, Henry, you need to build a library. And so he did. Back in 1920, this opened. Well, no one library can collect everything, but the Huntington Library has a tremendous quantity of books, manuscripts, photographs, maps, posters, things that are called ephemera, movie tickets, railroad passes. They all tell an important story about the life and times of people around the world. We're going to see, and I want you to keep track of every century, we're going to see a thousand years of literature here today. If you look up on the wall, anybody see anybody they know? Jack London. Jack London, Call of the Wild. I bet you've all read that. Next to Jack London, Langston Hughes. We learned about him in the... Uh-huh. Well, he wrote so many wonderful poems. Here is George Washington. George Washington was 21, and they said, you're in charge of all the American forces in the Ohio Valley. On your left here is the Gutenberg Bible. On your right is Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. When Henry first bought this property in 1903, there was a beautiful house here, and the man who owned that house owned the largest winery in California, which was located right here. Well, Henry Huntington, before he started building his house, he started building his garden. And the first garden that they started here was the lily pond. So that garden is more than 100 years old. As kind of a wedding gift for Arabella, one of the things he wanted to do was make this property attractive to her. So he built the Japanese garden because he thought it would make her happy. Arabella was interested in cut flowers. So they had the rose garden. Another garden that started really early was the desert garden. And Henry Huntington actually didn't like cactus but his head gardener liked them. Bueno, esta fue una una idea de uh, Henry, el supervisor de cuando hace 100 años cuando ellos comenzaron este jardín, se sentaron en la sombra del chicamur que todavía existe allí y tuvieron una conversación y miraron que que, que esta tierra era muy buena para los cactus. Entonces, eh, Mr. Huntington decidió de que Henry saliera a colectar plantas para hacer, comenzar este jardín, que ahora es, este, es muy bonito para nosotros. 
Our conservatory is this big glass building that has plants from areas all over the world. I started volunteering here because I was interested in botany and studying plants under the microscopes for my biology class. My favorite plant in the conservatory is the pitcher plant because it's a really cool plant. It catches bugs and it can catch mice and birds. And my favorite plant is the um, Amorphophallus titanum. Did I say that right? Yeah. It's the big stinky plant that blooms like once every couple of years and it's just, it's enormous. It's, yeah. it's really cool. <laughs> What's so unique about Chinese garden is that it's different from Western gardens, which we usually see the theme is the plants. But in Chinese garden, as you can see, we have bridges, buildings, pavilions. Yeah, many people thought, just because I work at the Chinese garden, they thought I'm a specialist in plants, but actually I'm not. My major at graduate school is art history. So that implies that Chinese garden actually is more close to art and the literature. For example, we often said that Chinese garden actually is like a painting scroll. So as you go inside the garden, it's like you are unrolling a three-dimensional Chinese painting. When I came to work at the Huntington, the Chinese garden was a big surprise to me. It was magical. I loved walking around the garden, and one day I discovered the garden when it was misty. And there was this really wonderful experience of discovery. It was intentional that it was created that way. We have some objects in the art collection that remind me of the Chinese garden in a strange way. We have a painting by an artist named Raphael Peel. It reminds me of the Chinese garden, not just in the color, but in the experience. The more time you look, the more the artist speaks to you, and it will begin to reveal itself to you. When we look at the blue boy, what is the first thing that we see? What catches our attention? The outfit, very good. Gainsborough was influenced by Van Dyck in painting wonderful textures. They did an x-ray a long time ago of the blue boy, and they found that next to him there was a dog, and then there was a man behind. Why did he decide to take all of that out of the painting and just did the landscape where he's standing at? They wanted him to be the main focus. Very good. This boy was not really a famous one like all these people that we see in the, in the gallery. He did this portrait just to show his skills. The entire art collection consists of European and American paintings, sculpture, prints, drawings, photographs, amazing decorative arts, glass, ceramics, silver, furniture. One of the primary responsibilities of a curator is to take care of these things so visitors and scholars can come and enjoy them for long after we're gone. The fun part is actually working with the objects. You'd be surprised at how different objects look, just one way or the other way, switched on a wall. The way they're framed makes a big difference, so there are all these tiny little details in the presentation of work then we work with teams of conservators who help us make repairs, sort of like taking care of a person, like taking a person to the doctor, taking an object to a conservator. The reason why we ask that you don't touch any of the art that, that you see is because you have oil and dirt on your hands, even if you can't see it. And when you touch a piece of art, you transfer that oil and that dirt to whatever you touch. A conservator is somebody who works to protect, to prolong the life, and to, in some cases, restore cultural materials. The type of person that likes to do this type of work, likes to work with their hands, likes to be able to solve a problem every day. Every piece that you work on is unique, and if you like solving a mystery, then maybe this profession is for you. Um, I thought it was interesting to see Washington's signature document. He was 21 when they sent him on the trip. If I were 21, I'd probably be in college and 
in a dorm room somewhere. So I thought it was pretty interesting just to relate his life to mine. What I found most interesting was the blue boy um, because out of all the other paintings in the room, it really struck me as the most unique. Even though he was young, he held a confidence about him, the way he stood, that was more reverent and more unique than a lot of the other paintings around it. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bill. Thank you. We just uh, went through the, the library main hall, and we saw some really, really old books. I don't think they have library cards here.